Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yeah, speaking of the bias of media, Marshall McLuhan, uh, who we have just discussed, uh, offers us a model, and this model is commonly referred to as the tetrad of media effects, like So, this model is commonly referred to as the tetrad of media effects and this is McLuhan's model and this is uh, tetrad because uh, from the etymology you can infer this has got to do with the number uh, 4 like the tetrad uh, comes from like the tetra like tetra uh, has got to do with uh, 4. So, this model seeks to explain the biases of uh, media. And we are going to look into new media through the lens of McLuhan's model and try to understand like uh, for example, the base superstructure model or the Ferdinand dissociator model or Yeoman Jacobson models. We are, we are talking about a diverse range of models here. So, up to now the models we have discussed including the base superstructure model and some of the earlier models uh, that could account for the nature of traditional or old media. Uh, we saw how they are inadequate, insufficient, uh, if not totally redundant uh, for making sense of uh, the new media. So, we have before us is this uh, uh, new model, which is to say McLuhan's tetrad of media effects and we are going to see uh, whether or not it serves the purpose of making better sense of uh, the new media. So, this model seeks to explain the biases of media and for any technological artifact whatsoever, not just about media, McLuhan asks us, McLuhan uh, prompts us that if you are considering uh, to make sense of any technological artifact, uh, there is a series of questions that has that have to be uh, uh, there is a series of uh, uh, question uh, that has to be asked. McLuhan says uh, that we have to ask uh, four questions in order to under in order to understand the bias of a particular media. We have to ask these four questions in the context of that particular technology in uh, question in, in that particular technology under uh, consideration.
So, these are in uh, these are uh, McLuhan's tetrad uh, four set of questions. First, he prompts us to ask what does the technology enhance? Next, what does the technology make obsolete? Number three, what does it retrieve that has previously been obsolete? Uh, maybe other earlier forms of technologies make certain things obsolete. So, is it something that the new technology is retrieving that has been made obsolete by earlier uh, technological, uh, technological artifacts? Number four, what does it flip into when pushed to the extreme? So, these are McLuhan's four questions, the tetrad. So, enhancement, obsolescence, retrieval and flip into. So, with this, so taking cues from McLuhan here, we are going to ask these four set of questions. We are, go, we are going to ask these four set of questions in the context of the new media and certain, uh, certain technological artifact that the new media has uh, furnished. We are going to ask this four set of questions. So, let, let us do like a diagrammatic representation of McLuhan's tetrad. Let us represent it like this. So, this in rough is a diagrammatic representation of McLuhan's tetrad. So, on your right top you have uh, things that are being uh, made obsolete, on top left you have what is the new, what, what, is, what is the technology enhancing that will fit into your top right, on your bottom left you have what the media, what the technology retrieves and what uh, uh, and in your right bottom you have what the media reverses, what the media flips into when pushed into extremes. So, now let us try to figure out how new media, how uh, new media would feature into this uh, quadrant. Uh, I, will, I will illustrate this with two uh, examples. Number one, uh, the smart class uh, and that would be very palatable to you in the sense that this is uh, an online course and like uh, and and an online course being dispensed uh, through media infrastructures which involves the MOOC massive online open courses. Uh, the NPTEL courses are examples of like smart courses uh, which are which are which are made available by use of the smart classroom and so on and so forth. So, I will use the example of smart classroom, which is very pertinent uh, in the context of our uh, discussion given that this is a smart course. Uh, this is a this is an online course, uh, this is an online course uh, being dispensed through uh, the use of smart uh, technologies. So, that would be our first example that is of the smart class. The second example would be of the smartphone. 
So, I will consider these two pieces of technologies number one the smartphone sorry number one the smart class and number two the smartphone and we will try to figure out how these two pieces of technology uh, fits into uh, fit into uh, this four quadrant that McLuhan is prompting us to consider when considering a piece of new uh, technology. Uh, now, let us consider let us consider the smart class uh, as as our first example. Yeah, the smart the smart class let, let us let us ask what does the smart class enhance? So, it the smart class allows learners to communicate and collaborate uh, face to face uh, with others. Uh, regardless of the location, one may communicate with people who are specially uh, like space wise at a different location. You can communicate with them uh, through distance learning uh, in infrastructures in a face to face mode, uh, including experts in the field, people who teach online courses in smart classrooms. So, courses could be taught by people who do not require to be necessarily physically present here. Uh, as in the site, the location of, of the course. So, in short we call this P 2 P technologies like peer to peer, uh, peer to peer, peer to peer communication. So, it enhances uh, peer to peer uh, communication, but then we have to ask what does the smart class make obsolete. So, it makes obsolete the concept of the teacher as like the superior knowledge dispensing uh, subject like the know, know all of everything, the teacher in the class knows everything. So, this kind of a very supremist idea is now dispensed, it, 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 it is making it this obsolete and also it, it is op making obsolete the traditional learning, instructional or course delivery methods like the in class. Uh, distribution of learning materials and so on and so forth. So, these are these are some things that are that are being obsolete. So, to say uh, because of the smart class, then we have to ask what what does the smart class retrieve from the past which has been made obsolete by other earlier pieces of technology. So, the smart class in a way retrieves the oral tradition. If you look into the history of learning infrastructures uh, in the context of India for example, it was largely oral culture uh, reliant upon oral culture and oral tradition. The, so, so, the smart class in a way retrieves this tradition of orality like it is a very uh, orality dependent, very oral uh, dependent like you here uh, courses being delivered on the internet, on your computer or other handheld uh, devices and this is reliant upon like this increasing reliance uh, placed upon neighbors to assist when uh, expertise uh, warrants. Like when you need certain expertise, when you need uh, some help like this, there is no teacher in class who you can consult. So, you go to your neighbor. Uh, it, who you, you go to a peer, you go to uh, a co-student who is doing, the, who is taking the course with you, is reliant upon your neighbors or co-students when uh, expertise is warranted, and is also retrieves uh, the culture of uh, of orality. Now, uh, what what does it re what does it uh, reverse in the sense? What does it flip into when the smart class is pushed? Uh, to its extreme. So, when extended to its extreme like the smart class evolves into uh, sophisticated uh, 
instructional infrastructures. Uh, say for example, the e-school university like modes of distance learning when pushed to, ex, ex, to its extreme like furnishes this sort of very sophisticated uh, learning infrastructure, the e-school or the e-university. Uh, 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 if you think in this context, let me give you an example, uh, there is this new university in US that has come up, it is called University of People or University of the People, something of that sort. I am not, I'm not being able to retrieve the correct name offhand, but then uh, University of People in the US is a distance learning university uh, totally reliant upon volunteers as teachers who teach and people who want to take the courses in the university which is entirely free. But it is an university nevertheless and all the programs, uh, all the courses are accredited by some higher education council or something. So, this is uh, this is not like uh, random uh, courses, uh, the materials of which are made available online, but this is like a proper university. So, the university of the people, if you, uh, if you check it up online, uh, would point to the fact that it is a very alternative imagination of the university, very different from the learning infrastructures or the learning uh, institutions or the institutions of higher education that we are familiar with. So, it is a kind of an alternate imagination of higher education. So, if we quickly recap in the context of uh, the smart class, uh, the, we, are, we are asking McLuhan's tetrat, the four questions in the context of the smart class. What does it enhance? It enhances P 2 P communication. What does it make obsolete? It makes obsolete traditional learning infrastructural methods. It uh, makes obsolete uh, the teacher as a su supremest subject, teacher as an expert. What does it retrieve? Uh, it retrieves oral tradition. What does the smart class reverse? reverse? What does it flip into when pushed to extreme? It furnishes uh, ideas of alternative learning institutions. For example, the e-school or the universe or the e-university, uh, the distant learning university. So, when we get to ask the four set of questions in the context of technological uh, innovations or new technological artifacts, uh, our objective, our motto would be would be to place them, place them within this schema of the four uh, quadrants. So we'll now run this model. We'll run we'll we'll run a second example upon this uh, quadrant, which is to say our example of the. Uh, smartphone. Yes, so we are we are going to repeat the exercise with the next example, the smartphone. We are going to ask, uh, what does the smartphone enhance? So the increasing reliance on WhatsApping, MMSing. So this this is something which we can say the smartphone is enhancing. So, what does the smartphone make obsolete then? So, what does the smartphone make obsolete? Like the practice of SMSing, the practice of uh, the pager as a uh, device is like totally obsolete nowadays. We no longer get to see pagers. Like I think, uh, 10, 15 years, the pager was still a device people would use for texting. Uh, so texting uh, as a practice and pagers as as a device is totally uh, like the pager is totally obsolete. The SMS is increasingly being uh, obsolete. Like uh, a large traffic, uh, like the a large number of SMSers, a large number of people who would SMS and email is now, uh, th there is a shift of traffic from SMSing and emailing to uh, WhatsApping. So, it is enhancing uh, what the culture of WhatsApping uh, on the one hand and on the other hand, it is making obsolete uh, the culture of SMSing and it has already made 
uh, paging devices obsolete. Uh, what does the smartphone retrieve? So, what does the smartphone retrieve uh, and this is particularly interesting, uh, it retrieves the smartphone uh, uh, retrieves uh, our scrolling habits like this is uh, curiously if you uh, consider uh, scrolling was also a part of uh, like a, a very distant uh, uh, historical world like where bards and scholars would uh, scroll like they would have uh, these uh, letters were written in scrolls and they would roll uh, things like uh, they would have scrolls which were rolled uh, part of uh, royal empires like people would send letters through scrolls and all of that. So, we scroll our devices be it the tab, be it the smartphone, uh, we scroll left and right, we scroll up and down. Yeah, so, so scrolling, as a, uh, scrolling as a practice was totally uh, obsolete before the arrival of this handheld uh, um, gadgets. Uh, so, the smartphone is retrieving this scrolling habits and also if you could imagine uh, Facebook uh, people uh, entered their uh, incidents and events from their daily life. So, in that sense one can imagine the Facebook or the Instagram uh, that archives our daily lives, daily events. So, in that sense Facebook can also be imagined as a, a form of a diary entry or a journal entry where you keep record of uh, what happens in your daily lives. So, it is kind of a journal entry or a diary entry, the culture of which which was largely obsolete, but now being retrieved with the help of uh, uh, smartphones and other uh, handheld devices. So, this is, this is something that the smartphone is uh, retrieving. So, what does the smartphone uh, uh, reverse? When pushed to extreme, if you, if you, if you push uh, the efficacy of the uh, handheld devices to its extreme, uh, it uh, yields uh, what it has already yielded to a large uh, extent, but it is now being enhanced, reimagined and reoriented the concept of for example, the e E governance like app based governance, e governance uh, and uh, say for example, the way we buy uh, travel tickets nowadays, the bus tickets, the train tickets and so on and so forth. It is not reliant upon a physical ticket counter or a, or a human uh, interface for that matter like this app based thing and the in e governance that the India gov government is pushing through and the whole uh, rhetoric centering uh, the imagination of digital India. Uh, if you can recall in this context is kind of a uh, is, 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 is an example of what happens when uh, the smartphone and the smart technologies are pushed to its extreme. So, we have run uh, McLuhan's model, McLuhan's tetrad uh, in the context of two examples which gives us a better sense of uh, uh, which gives us a better sense of how uh, new technology, the effects and the impacts of new uh, technologies uh, have to be assessed. It is important however, to remember uh, in this context that McLuhan suggests that there is a simultaneity like uh, this is very context, uh, uh, sorry this is very important in the context of the McLuhan uh, tetrad uh, that, uh, that these four things enhancement, obsolescence, reversal and retrieval these four elements they work hand in hand and they work simultaneously like it is not that the enhancement stops and the obsolescing begins and the retrieval follows it is not that like that these four quadrants what we have in the four quadrants enhance enhancement obsolescence retrieval reversal they work simultaneously this is very important to understand uh, in this context 
these are not chronologic, these are not chronological. So, I want to draw your attention to the phenomenon of simultaneity as opposed to chronology in the tetrad, which explains uh, the situations and I quote McLuhan here from his book, The Medium in the Massage. Uh, and this expression uh, is, is very important in making sense of the simultaneity. Uh, so, McLuhan suggests there is simultaneity in the tetrad, which explains and I quote situations that are in process. So, this four phenomenon, this four aspect uh, of new technology, uh, they are always in process, they process together. So, end quote. So, both phenomena that the smartphone, that the smartphone enhances whatsapping and makes obsolete SMSing or page paging devices or for that matter the four phenomena, the four aspects that the smartphone uh, enhances whatsapping, obsolesces SMSing, retrieves scrolling avids and reverses into uh, e institutions, e governance happens uh, simultaneously. So, in other words the implication of the new media, McLuhan suggests has to be considered in term or in terms of what it simultaneously enables us to do and it one and 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 what it is disapproving of, what it gives uh, gives us and takes away from us. So, this is the simultaneity. If, if you uh, now uh, consider this at con consider this uh, in tandem with consider this in relation to uh, the Harold Innes's model Harold Innes's uh, two mod uh, Harold Innes's model of the time bias and the space bias uh, uh, what Mac McLuhan's is 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 a gloss over uh, uh, in my understanding McLuhan's suggestion is a gloss over the Harold Innes's conception of the bias uh, these biases if we go by McLuhan are, are simultaneous as opposed to the Harold Innes model. If you, if you recall the Harold Innes model, the time bias and the space, space bias, uh, they were mutually exclusive. So, Harold Innes suggested that the time bias media, the time bias media is not space biased, contrary wise the space biased media is not time biased. So, they operate in isolation, they are mutually exclusive. A time biased media is not space biased, a space biased media is not time biased. They have their own functions to fulfill, they have their own ideological dispositions uh, with from within which uh, they work. As opposed to the McLuhan model, the four quadrants here and by extension the four aspects uh, that we have fitted into the four quadrants, these are simultaneous, these are not uh, mutually exclusive. So, this simultaneity is important here to, uh, to make note of. While acknowledging the importance of the socio-cultural and historical factors for which different media acquire different values, like remember the telegraph example here, it, it acquires a certain cultural signification. The telegraph becomes a vehicle with the help of which the Britishers exercise their power and control in the colonies. So, it acquires a value, it acquires a cultural signification. So, the historical factors for which different media acquire different values in different cultures, we have to realize that McLuhan rather from a determinist point of view uh, is believing or rather prompting us, rather suggesting us to believe that uh, the design features of the historical uh, the, sorry, the design features of different media uh, affect our uh, media ecology. So, it is not uh, uh, the question is not about the dichotomy between the technology and the social. So, the Mac McLuhan's the novelty of McLuhan's model is it does not restrict its view upon uh, technology versus society or the loop that we have uh, discussed like uh, the technology and the society, uh, but it 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 prompts us to think about the historical factors, the history and the context that renders certain media infrastructure to acquire uh, certain cultural signification, uh, to acquire uh, certain values. So, it is it's that, so McLuhan draws our attention to the design uh, features. So, uh, 
if we go back to our uh, smartphone example, uh, the smartphone can be scrolled because the smartphone is small and the smartphone is handheld. Well, you cannot uh, scroll or at least it is cumbersome to scroll, say for example, if it is a 90 inch LED television, you cannot scroll a 90 inch LED television. So, there are other ways with which you play around make sense of the LED television, but when it comes to the smartphone, its size, which is to say the particular design feature allows you to navigate your phone in a certain way, which is to say uh, your practice of, of scrolling. So, what McLuhan's model is very, uh, Mac, what McLuhan's model is suggesting us to think is about these certain design features, which again is, is, is a bias, which, uh, uh, which again is a, is a bias, which, which again is a certain form of uh, disposition, which affect our media ecology. So, all media McLuhan argues and uh, I am I'm, I'm reading a series of quotes here and I am quoting McLuhan all from his book, The Medium is the Massage. Uh, so, the media McLuhan argues are therefore, extensions of some human faculty, psychic or physical like the smartphone, when you scroll your smartphone, it is an extension of your finger, it is an extension of your uh, sensory uh, organ, uh, which is the touch. You touch your smartphone screen and you scroll it and you exert control uh, through your fingers. So, it is an it is an extension of certainly uh, your, your uh, 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 it is an extension of your finger. So, which is why McLuhan, uh, McLuhan says all media, I quote, all media are extensions of some human faculty, psychic or physical. So, end quote. For him, the book therefore, is an extension of the eye. The book, when you read it through your eyes, uh, it's, it's, it, the book is no longer a medium through which you make sense of the content of the book. The book is no longer a medium. The book is exerting its control over you as a subject. And for that, McLuhan is saying the book is an extension of the eye. Likewise, the will as in uh, the car wheels, the motorcycle wheels, the will is an extension of the feet, the cloth of the skin and so on. So, these are pieces of technology, which McLuhan uh, says are extensions of uh, certain human faculties. So, McLuhan therefore, teasingly coined the oft quoted phrase, the medium is the massage uh, of which we have um, uh, we have we have we have mentioned this before uh, massage as opposed to message uh, misspelt nevertheless uh, but it has but it but not without uh, reason uh, and this is which is the title of the book is now a very oft quoted expression in media studies uh, media is the massage as uh, this McLuhan uses this so as to stress the intensity of the effect uh, that uh, uh, intensity of the effect that media has on the realm of human perception. So, and uh, the scientific quote unquote uh, scientific, because like this is debated and uh, the, the recognition of uh, the, the scientific recognition of iPhone separation anxiety, the anxiety people have when they are separated from their iPhone has been uh, deemed as a disease. Uh, it is it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a symptom, it is a symptom of a disease. and, uh, and this is, uh, I am I'm quoting, I am citing this from the Huffington Post report, uh, 9th January 2015. Uh, if you consider this example, like this is a prominent example, uh, it's, it, it is uh, a prominent example of the extent of ubiquity of the internet that we have been uh, talking about. And this is why McLuhan urges us to consider how our sense perception is continuously being massaged by what he calls the inventory of effects. And that is the subtitle of his book. If you look into uh, his book was titled, The Medium is the Massage, the Inventory of Effects. So, he is talking about effects, how media exerts uh, certain sensory effect uh, on us. And uh, the, the example like, uh, the, it is the, the, the iPhone separation anxiety uh, is a case in point. 
and if you uh, if you if some of you might be aware the american uh, psychological association uh, i'm not very sure of the uh, authoritative body but uh, the selfie the 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 obsession uh, with the obsession uh, people have with taking selfies is also now diagnosed as a disease these are examples the iphone separation anxiety or the obsession with selfies like uh, these these are from a very uh, quasi scientific imagination uh, are examples of the ubiquity of the new media and the sensory effect uh, that McLuhan is trying to draw our attention uh, to. Uh, on this note, uh, let us hear uh, from McLuhan himself his view on uh, the new media and its sensory effects. 